When Tiger Woods first came out on tour, he said he noticed how his fellow pros were always pin high. This means that they were controlling the distances of their irons to perfection. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to hit all your iron shots so you are pin high every time. I'm sure you've been in that situation where you've hit a fantastic drive down the middle of the fairway on a really tight hole, you get up to the golf ball, you're full of confidence, you laser the flag, and lo and behold, you've got a really awkward number right there. It's right in between your seven iron and your eight iron. You end up picking the eight iron, you leave it short. You end up picking the seven iron, you blaze it over the back of the green, and then you end up making a high number from there. Well, this is one of the crucial skills that good players, scratch players, professional golfers are good at. They are very, very good at controlling the distances of their shot so they know how to add a little bit of yardage they know how to take a little bit of yardage off so today we're going to go through how to do that so the first point is stop guessing now what do i mean by stop guessing well the amount of times i have somebody come in for a lesson i go how far did you hit that club and they go mm, about 140 about 150 and frankly that's not that's not good enough because 140 to 150 is 10 yards if you have if you're that kind of player that you know you don't know the number to the yard or to a couple of yards then we need to get more specific now don't think that getting more specific is just for the better player because it's not it's for every single golfer so very simply here's what you're going to do find either a buddy a local pro or a local facility that has some sort of accurate yardage device so like a track man a gc quarter flight scope something like that now when you do your yardages what i want you to do is grab every club out of your bag and then place five balls next to each club so what you're going to do is you're going to hit five full swings that are nice and smooth. So the same tempo you'd hit out on a golf course. You're going to get five different carry distances. Take out any anomalies. So if you've maybe under hit one massively, you know, you didn't hit it very well or, or you massively pull hooked one and it just spiked the carry yardage up. Then again, get rid of the anomalies. And then you're just going to take your average of those carry distances. Now, why do I say the average? Well, that's just, that's your baseline number. We might be a little bit above it. We might be a little bit below Low it but at least then we have that nice middle ground from there do that with every single club once you have your numbers write them down on a piece of paper what you will notice is when you get your yardages that they'll roughly be depending on your club head speed anywhere from a 10 to 15 yard gap between each club why is this well firstly the shafts get a little bit longer as we go up the bag so the club head is naturally going to start to travel a little bit faster but also between an eight iron and a seven iron we'll roughly find that there's about four degrees of loft difference that will equate to roughly 10 to 15 yards difference so again it depends on a couple of factors club head speed being one of them but we will find that we get a nice gapping across the board so once you've done that that is phase one we have now taken the guesswork out we know exactly how far your pitching wedge goes your eight iron your six iron however many clubs you have we know exactly how far every single one goes and the last key with this is make sure it is the carry distance not the total carry is to where it first lands why is that important because the amount of rollout is going to change depending on the conditions. So as long as we know how far it carries, we can then guesstimate in terms of the rollout. So now we know how far each club goes. How do we tackle those half yardages? Well, believe it or not, they're actually very, very simple. So again, we're trying to do the same things. We're trying to swing in balance. We're trying to do all of these different things. But number one is we can choke down on the club to take a little bit of yardage off. Now, why does this work? Well, what we are essentially doing is if we choke down about an inch on the club, what we are doing is we have now shortened this club. So if you picture the difference between a seven iron and a nine iron, put them side by side next to each other, you'll see that there's a maybe like an inch difference between the two. That inch difference might equate to two or three miles an hour. As a result, when you couple in the different lofts as well, that's going to produce a very different yardage. So by taking what I have here, an eight iron, and gripping down about an inch, what I will find is I might take two to three miles an hour off the shot. As a result of this, I'm going to take maybe six yards off the shot. So if I hit my uh, eight iron 160, which is roughly whereabouts it sits right now, if I choke down on this, this will probably fly anywhere from 154 to 155. So suddenly now, if I'm in between an eight iron and a nine iron, I know if a nine iron can't quite get there, I can choke down about an inch on that eight iron. I can get just a little closer to the ball just to counteract that inch. And then from there, I can do a nice smooth normal swing and I will find that it comes out a good six yards less than where it normally does. 
The second way that we can tackle those in between yardages is by just simply doing a three quarter swing. Now, is this way better than choking down on the club? Not necessarily, it depends on the player themselves. So whatever you feel more comfortable doing, you can do it this way. Now, why does this work? Well, again, we are basically just shortening down our arc. So if I'm doing a full swing, at the top of my backswing, I have longer to accelerate this club on the way down, which means I can reach a higher speed at impact, which then means more distance overall. Versus if I just do say like a shoulder to shoulder swing, and I'm referring to where my hands get to, then from that position, I'm naturally gonna see that I'm gonna take some yardage off. Why? Because it's a shorter backswing, I'm gonna have less time to accelerate that club on the way through. Now, here's the thing. This one takes a little bit of practice, and this is more for those sort of feel-based golfers. Now, every golfer is a feel-based golfer because obviously you're feeling things as you hit it. But for those that, you know, maybe you don't feel comfortable choking down on the club, you can just do what you call a little three-quarter swing. And that's precisely what we're doing here. We're just shortening up the swing, which is going to reduce the club head speed. And again, we're going to see a little bit of redu reduction in terms of distance. Now, one thing that I like to do with this shot as well, just sort of a little bonus to it, is I just like to preset a little bit more weight on my left leg. Now, the reason for this is very simple. Because it's a shorter swing, I, I personally feel like I just don't have the same amount of time to get back to my left side. And I see with a lot of players, when they try and hit a three-quarter shot, they actually tend to hit it slightly fat. Because again, you just don't have that time to shift back to your left side. So if I hit a little three-quarter shot, I'm still gripping it at the normal point on the club, so right at the top of the club, I might just preset just a little bit more weight. So I'd be maybe 60, 40, or 70, 30 on my left side. Then from there, it's just gonna feel like a shoulder-shoulder swing. It might go a little bit further past, but that's what it feels like to me. And I should see again about six to eight yards come off this shot. So let's try it here. Shoulder, shoulder swing. Right there, you can see that's come out very nice and straight. Definitely gonna come out a good six to eight yards shorter. But again, that's option two in terms of controlling your distance. The key with all of this is practice it. Do it regularly, do it often, try it out on the golf course, constantly use your feel element to this, and then you're gonna start to see some good results. If you've enjoyed this video, then please like and subscribe, and I'll hopefully see you back here soon.